we'll first discuss types and things. Types are really what you want to talk about in your topic, while things are really concrete examples of those types. Let me give you an example. Let's say I've got a type called animals and another type of food. I've got five things in my animals, a bird, a turkey, a pig, and so on. And similarly for the food, I could have cheese, an apple, banana, etc. How can I capture this as rules for my chatbot? Well, the way we do it is to first declare two types, animal and food. And for animal, I have the five different things bird, turkey, pig, cow, and horse. And similarly for food, I've got the various uh, food types. The funny at colon symbol is really a type creator function. I want to move on next to templates. And really, templates are the fundamental part of your chatbot. It is really how your chatbot understands and responds to the user. And templates are really where types and things make sense. So let's begin with a simple example. Let's say your user asks your chatbot, do you like oil? Well, in the absence of any templates, your bot will say, I don't know. Let's say your bot has one simple template. And this template has got three rule matches, and those are the, represented by the cues, and a response, which is your A, or your answer. So if the user has like apple, or like oil, or like metal anywhere in a sentence, that means that that template matches. And when the match is made, the A response is fed back to the user. So in this case, we see clearly like oil does match one of the rules in, in the template. And so your chatbot responds with, yes, I do, which is the answer. What we do is we declare a type called likes. And the likes has three things, apple, oil, and metal. And these really are what the chatbot likes. And we transform the template to just have one rule. And this rule uses the type to make the match. So in this case, the dollar sign likes is a like. It can be, it, can, it will match apple, oil, or metal. So in this case, it matches like oil, and so there's a match, and your chatbot says, yes, I do. The way to read these template rules is that the dollar sign likes takes on one of the things it represents. So because likes is either apple, oil, or metal, dollar sign like will match for any one of those things. This combination of Q and A and the double dash at the end, you must end all your templates with a double dash. These three constitute a template. A template can consist of more than one Q and more than one A, which we'll see in later sessions. But for now, simple templates consist of one or more Qs and a single A section. But they all must end with a double dash. OK, so let's say we have this template. And let's say the user asks now, do you like apples? Well, apples, with the plural, doesn't appear as any one of our likes. So really, there is no match. And therefore, the chatbot says, I don't know. To fix this, we need to use an OR in our likes. So what we do is we just append the OR and also amend the likes with a with a plus symbol with the S. So it would mean that if you have apple for a like, apples would also match, oils would match, and metals would match. This one Q would match both singular and plural forms. So let's try it again. 
Let's say the user asks, do you like oil? Well, the answer is yes, I do, because that's a singular form with a like, and that works. You like metals? Well, that's plural with a like, and yes, that would match too. But if the user asks, are you crazy about apples? Well, that wouldn't match because the word preceding apples is not like, it's about. So what we need to do now is to change how we match the literal like. We want to make that a type as well. So let's call that type love. And let's say love could either be like or crazy about. Notice if you have a blank space between two words, you must use an underscore for that to match correctly. And we replace the like with dollar sign love because this is no longer a literal match, it is a match using types. Now, if we use these set of rules, what we find is if the user said, you crazy about metal, eh? The bot will say, yes, I do. If you notice, you shouldn't aim for perfect grammar. What you should aim for in your bots is a factually correct response. What you can also do is to put the like or love or whatever match you have back into your answer. So this is not no longer a match, but just a repetition of what the user has already told you. So for example, if he says again, you crazy about metal A, then the response in this case would be, yes, I crazy about metal. Don't make this too complicated. Always keep it simple because simple rules are easy to correct and debug. Complicated rules are hard to correct. I'll give you one last tip and that is sometimes you want to give uh, different answers at random. So what you do is you just separate out your answers using a semicolon and remember to put spaces between them like how I've shown here on, in the slide. So if the user asked, you like apples? Well, sometimes it might answer, yeah. And sometimes it might answer, I love apples. So the tip is just to use the semicolon to create alternatives. There's no limit to the number of alternatives you can create. I've done two here, but you can do more than that. Okay, so let, let's just review a few uh, things that you need to do to build your microtopic. The first stage is to create some types relevant for your microtopic. Start simple, start with a few types which are relevant to the microtopic and gradually build those up. You want to then define things for those types. Of course, you need to use those types in templates. A good type would be used in many different templates. And lastly, you can use things in answers and models. We haven't described that so much here in this session. We will do it in other sessions. Let me show you how you can create a microtopic. First, go to AutoCAF, click on BB2020, and then click on a new file. This should give you a blank file. Start by typing out your topic. Let's say we have a topic here about your likes and dislikes. So we'll start with a type called likes, and we'll define likes as um, I like apples, I like computers, I like Bach, okay, and you can think of other things, I like coffee. All right, so that defines the types for this microtopic and a few things that go into it. Next, I want to create some templates for this topic. So I'll start with a simple one, and you, and I'll start with a simple topic which addresses um, do you like coffee, do you like apples, etc. Et now, I made a mistake here. I shouldn't have used apples. I should have used the singular. And you know now that I can use or I want to match also. And I want to also have like at the start of this. 
So then this rule would match do you like apple or do you like apples would match do you like computer or computers. Now it also would match do you like box which doesn't make sense but it's okay. We want to put in the response yes I do or you could say I love Okay, simple response. And you need to end this off with the double dash, not underscore, it's a dash. All right, so this is a simple microtopic. Let's just save this. Now, when you try to save it, don't save it in the main folder. Go to Topics and save it there. So I'm going to call it Likes. Say OK. All right, it will say like saved. And if I click on the file explorer again, I can see likes here. All right, now I want to test this microtopic. So what I do is I go back to main. In fact, it should keep main open all the time. And I want to comment out the bad language, or I can just leave it on. Remember what I said that uh, chatbots are a collection of microtopics, and the bad language. Uh, microtopic is actually quite a useful one because it prevents abuse uh, to your bot and just copy that line and paste that and I'm going to change bad language to likes. You should always have bad language as the first microtopic because that will capture all your bad language to start with. Uh, if you had done this in the reverse order then what that would mean is that likes would then start to process bad language before bad language had a chance to deal with it. So that's not good. So we want to have it this way instead. Okay. And then you want to run some tests here, like do you like bananas, right? Let's try one which is obviously in the microtopic, which is do you like coffee? Do you like coffee? Okay, so I've got one there. Uh, spaces are very important here, so don't do stuff like that, or you know, uh, put this too close together like that. It won't work. Okay. All right, let's try another one here, another test question. So it's important for you to have test questions so that you can see how your bot responds before you launch it, and make sure that everything's okay. Do you like mm, bah. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to test this bot. And so what test does is just to activate this set of rules from here to here. Everything in between is run. Okay. Anything in purple is called a comment, and it's just ignored by the system. Let's run tests. Okay, now you s if you see at the last line, it says I love coffee, I love bar, but there's no uh, on the same line. That's because I missed out the CR here, which is to put in a new line. Again, you need to put a space between everything, right? Spaces are important. Let's try and test it again. Okay, so it works fine. Now, you can go back to likes and make it a little more complicated. Um, let's say I want to have, instead of likes, I put loves. And uh, yeah, I have a new, right, or love, I would say. And that could be the word like, love, prefer, uh, crazy about. Um, dig okay for those of you who are older all right and you want to change this to love right okay and I want to make this also the same as what the user asked so it is I crazy about now that would be not grammatical but it's a good res it's a response it's actually correct response that's fine don't try and tr don't try too hard 
to come up with a grammatically correct response because that would make your bots very complicated and messy. It's much better to focus on simplicity and focus on having factually correct responses. Okay, so let's go back to main again and click on test. Now, a lot of so-called bugs are because people click on, they go to likes and they try this. Now that would have, that would give you a mess, right? So you don't want, you don't want this. Don't use th this button, it's meant for other things. Let's go back to main and just click on test first. Okay, it sort of works. And let me, that's, I didn't try, I should have put in new, I should put in new questions. Let's try love. And okay. So now, once you're happy with this, the next step is to publish. Now, I don't want to publish it under the name bot. I want to change the name. I can call it likes. Okay. And once I'm happy with that, you save that. Um, and the first line, instead of hello, how are you? Um, I could say guess my likes and loves. You must put a space between in it and your first word. Spaces are important. This will cause a problem. Okay, and if you want to change the background, you can. Just go to the internet and just look for some nice background. Let's say, I don't know, you could choose a picture of Bach. Okay. Uh, go to the images. Okay, I've got one here on Wikipedia. Okay, make sure it's copyright free. So this one I think is okay. Um, yeah, it's in the public domain, so that's fine. So what we do is we'll just copy this copy link, copy image dress. We can go out here and we want that background to be back in our bar, right? Okay, and for the avatar, well, we can leave it as it is, or we can choose something else that we like and do the same thing. All right, so let's save all this, and now we can publish. All right, that's great. So now you know that your bot now is no longer called bot, it's called likes, right? So. We have to change the URL. So let's click on app.smojo.adore and it's uh, bar, sorry, likes. Okay. So it's not hard to guess that this bot likes bar. Now, because this chat bot is a combination of the bad language bot and the likes bot, it will still handle uh, bad language like hello silly, right? It'll say don't be rude and uh, do you like bar? And yes, it says I like bar, right? Okay, that's it. This is the end for session two. I want you to read your lab instructions now for this session and complete the exercises. Good luck.